covered in several kibbutz that are close to the border after Hamas launched that surprise attack on Saturday. Let's speak now to Al Jazeera's Charles Stratford. He's in Kafar Azar in southern Israel. That's one of those areas that the Israeli army has just been into and cleared of Hamas fighters. Tell us the scene there, Charles. Yes, that's right, Laura. The Israeli military telling us that there was fighting up until the early hours of this morning in this village, a village that basically sits pretty much directly on the Gaza border. You can see the fence that runs on the western side of the village, and there's basically a big hole in it where it has been breached. There are bodies all over the village, what look to be Hamas or Palestinian fighters, now bloated by the sun, and lots of civilians as well. Many of those civilians still in the homes in which they were killed. The Israeli military saying that there are lots of foreign workers as well, they believe, were also killed in this attack. Many of the homes completely destroyed. What's so shocking is that, you know, people's lives, people's belongings are spread out across, you know, the, the, their lawns. Uh, where They've been blown out from these houses as, as they've been hit by explosives. That breach that I talked about is one of dozens, according to the military, the Israeli military, these gaps where Hamas fighters came through. Very interesting also to see one of these paragliders, a destroyed paraglider, there in and amongst the rubble also, which the Israeli military say was used by Hamas to, to cross into this village. Now, correspondent Jody Cohen was, has been interviewed Rob Simons, who is the family of missing person Dor Shafir. Now, Shafir went missing at the music festival, which was attacked by Hamas militants. Listen in to a first-person account of the horror unleashed by Hamas militants. Rob, your cousin is missing since Saturday, since the attack by Hamas in southern Israel. What is your family going through right now? I can't imagine. I think it's a, a mixture between trauma and, and shock. Uh, I was with my cousin, who's uh, the mother of my missing cousin, uh, yesterday, and she is just in bits, trying to do whatever she can to help, which is why we're reaching out to media to see what we can do to help. Uh, and just total you know, trauma endless crying, hardly being able to catch breath because we just don't know where it is and uh, the, the pain of the not knowing is very difficult to handle. Have you had any news whatsoever of what happened? Uh, a little bit. Um, unfortunately, Dor Shafir, who's my cousin, was uh, in the south at a music festival with his girlfriend over Friday night Saturday. We had news last night that his girlfriend was found murdered by Hamas in the fields in the south of uh, the country. We don't know any news on the door yet. Um, I think the, the obvious possibilities are either we're clinging to the hope that he's in hiding uh, and can be found, but it's been you know, since Saturday morning now, um, maybe three days in, uh, in hiding if that's even possible. Uh, or the alternative is that he's suffered the same fate as his girlfriend, uh, or that Hamas have taken him like they've taken over 100 civilians into Gaza um, as hostages. And what message do you want to share with everyone? You said that you wanted to speak to the media to try and um, get your message across. What is that message that you want people to know? I think it's very simple. It's a certain pressure from governments outside of Israel. Uh, on Hamas. This is not uh, a normal situation where um, you know, you're, you're negotiating with uh, normal people um, and the pressure needs to come from outside of Israel. There's very little that um, the Israeli government can really do to get back hostages that are being held in Gaza. Uh, my cousin Dor, we have both British and Irish connections, so we've been in touch both with uh, the British authorities and uh, the Irish authorities in, in requesting that pressure is put on Hamas to release the hostages. Israel is in a state of shock. 
of course, Gaza is in a terrible state of shock. You know, mm. 2.3 million people being bombed left, right and centre in retribution for these attacks. But, yes, talking about Israel, the people here are in shock and angry as well. We spoke, we were in Sterot, which is a town close to the... right, pretty much on the Gaza border, about two, three k's from the, the Gaza border, further to the north from here, earlier this morning, and we spoke to a man who was shockingly candid in the language he was using. He was like, we've got to go in and we've got to kill them. And he wasn't specific either. He wasn't specifically talking about Hamas. He was mm. that angry. You got a sense that he was blaming the Palestinian people as well. And that, of course, is what is so dangerous about this. It fuels so much hate. He's like, we've got to kill them. We've got to stop their water. We've got to stop their electricity. We've got to stop their power. We've got to beat them. We can never allow this to happen again. So... Voices like that coming out of Israel are perhaps not surprising, but are of great concern.